Jason Blum has changed everything about the horror genre. And if you disagree with me, I'm going to show you why you're wrong. Hello everybody, my name is Eric Kasloff and I am the Hara MBA. So before we get into how Jason Blum changed horror movies and what we can learn from it, let's talk a little bit about his origin story. Jason Blum's dad, Irving Blum, was the owner of an art gallery called the Ferris Gallery. His mom, Shirley, was an art professor. Now, just like his son, Irving Blum knew how to walk the line between business and art perfectly. How, you ask? Well, you know those Andy Warhol suit paintings that all the hipsters go crazy about? Well, his dad was the first person in America to sell them. He sold them separately, but then he realized, you know what, there might be something more to these things. So he bought them all back for practically nothing. Then he worked out a deal with Andy Warhol to sell them as a set. If you ask me, that was a straight gangster move by Jason Blum's dad. When Jason got older, he went to Vassar University, where his roommate was Noah Baumbach. No, I'm not kidding. Yeah, that Noah Baumbach and Jason Blum were college roommates, and they were pretty close. So close, in fact, Noah Baumbach wrote a script called Fifth Year about a bunch of guys in college who did not want to leave and came up with all these reasons not to. One of the characters was based on Jason. Now, here's a really funny story. It took them a long time to get the movie made. And one of the reasons it got made is because Steve Martin wrote a note telling people how much he liked the script. And they would send that along when they sent the script to production companies. Now, it took a while, but eventually the movie got made. But they changed the title to kicking and screaming not this kicking and screaming i just think it is a really really good movie that now, jason blum's after college life is pretty interesting but instead of me doing all the talking i'm gonna let the man tell you from his own mouth up to an entirely new social world i decided to start a business with them a theater company it was called malapart it was also at that time that i met an actor named ethan hawk Ethan and I have collaborated on a half a dozen projects. We are so close, he has been willing to die for me twice. Not long after that, Jason Blum got a job working for Miramax. Yeah, yeah, I know. He worked very closely with one of the most disgusting people to ever work in the film industry, Harvey Weinstein. In fact, from what I've heard, it sounded like Harvey Weinstein wanted Jason Blum to take over for him one day. So in 1999, Jason Blum attended the Sundance Film Festival, where a movie was going around that was getting a lot of buzz because it was using the internet to promote it, and people were waiting around the block to see that movie. And that movie was not the movie he bought. He bought Happy Texas. The movie he passed on... That we keep going... I insisted that we walk south. <laughs> Everything had to be my way. <laughs> and this is where we've ended up. Yeah, let that sink in. The guy who, years later, would go on to change horror movies skipped on a movie that changed horror movies. The Blair Witch Project was a Blumhouse movie before there was a Blumhouse. Now, one of the sad things about working at the Miramax, the Miramax, that about working at Miramax was how abusive Harvey Weinstein was towards Jason. In fact, he threw a cigarette at him once and then claimed that he wasn't throwing the cigarette at him. He was throwing it in the trash can. Jason had to go into therapy because of this and even thought about quitting the film industry overall. Thankfully for us, he didn't because he got a job working at Paramount. 
movies, my dream finally came true. I finally got to make that big budget Hollywood movie. It was called The Tooth Fairy. And guess what? My dream turned out to be a nightmare. I had 40 meetings, literally, about The Rock's Tooth Fairy costume. And then, on the weekend before we started shooting, the head of the studio, who had never seen the costume, saw the costume, he hated it. He thought the movie would fail if Dwayne Johnson's Tooth Fairy costume didn't look good. I told him everybody beneath him had approved it and loved it, including the director and The Rock. He didn't care. So I spent all weekend helping the wardrobe department make adjustments and sending videotapes and these adjustments back to the head of the studio. What was the result? Ta-da! So sure, people finally saw something I worked on. The movie was a success, but the process of making it was soul crushing. And I considered quitting the movie business altogether. Right after all the stuff with the Toot Fairy was done, he got a DVD of a directing sample for a movie that was going to go right to DVD. And that movie was... To me. Stay left the message. If it's not a ghost, what is it? So Paranormal Activity was going to be remade and the goal was when it came to DVD to put the theatrical version of the movie in the case as well as the original version that was shot for $15,000. But Jason Blum knew there was something about this movie so he scheduled a test screening with people he knew would dig the movie. If you don't know what a test screening is it usually happens at malls where people will come up to you or if you live in Hollywood, you'll be walking on the street and people will say, Hey, do you like horror movies? You want to see a horror movie? So he had a packed out theater with people waiting to see a cool horror movie. And the Paramount executives were there. And the audience ate up the movie like candy. The only thing they didn't like was the ending. So Paramount gave Odin Pell some money to fix up the sound to make it theater worthy because remember, it was going to go right the DVD. They also had him film a bunch of different endings. The goal was to have each ending play at a different theater. But as we all know, we only got one ending and that is the one with Katie walking away. Personally, I love that ending because we got to have one of the best franchises in horror and a movie that I personally like a little bit more than Blair Witch Project. So you would think after this that Paramount would have loved him and given him a promotion. The complete opposite happened. In fact, they fired him. But here's the thing. That is the best thing that could have happened to him and to us as horror movie fans because this is when the Blumhouse formula came into play. Yeah, we never work with first or second time directors. We work with experienced directors and we, I make a deal with them when they come into the office. I say, um, we're not gonna pay you, we're gonna pay you a very little amount, but in exchange for that, you get to do what you wanna do. And you have to be willing to work for scale um, and a participation if the movie makes money. And if it doesn't make money, then you're not going to make anything more than scale. If, if the movie is successful, is there a pool of money? Is it going to be triggered by box office bumps? Is there? Yeah, be so, the, so we share, we, everyone, everyone participates to a certain degree in, back, in the profit of the movies. And that includes, all our movies are union, but even the crew, there's a crew pool. There's a triangle like this. There's the number of speaking parts in the movie, uh, so the number of characters, the number of locations, and the number of stunts and special effects. What I always say to our director is, you get to pick one. You can have a lot of speaking parts, but then not too many locations, no stunts, no special effects. Or, or whatever one of those three things they can have a little bit of. I guarantee your movie will be seen, I just can't guarantee how it will be seen. So those movies uh, were very limited released, like on 10 theaters or something, and then now you can get them in ancillary markets. 
And you were asking about, about what? Like, next. say, Joe Johnson's movie, or what happens to it? Joe Johnson's movie actually comes out on. Uh, Criticism Jason Blum gets a lot is he greenlights a lot of PG 13 horror movies. You see, some horror fans feel that since horror has three R's in it, that the movies should always be a hard R. Personally, to me, that makes no sense. Something like Insidious should always be PG-13 because it is a supernatural horror movie, while stuff like The Purge and Halloween should always be a hard R. Here's another thing Jason Blum says about PG-13 horror movies that I think makes perfect sense. If someone gave me a scary movie script all about high school kids and they said it was rated R, we wouldn't make it. PG-13, we'd make it. You can't make a movie about kids, then tell those kids they can't see it without their parents. And here's something I would like to add to that. 45% of people who go to see horror movies are young women ages 25 and under. So, teenage girls. And where teenage girls go, you know damn sure teenage boys are going to go. So what can we as filmmakers learn from studying Jason Blum The first thing we should learn is follow the Blumhouse Triangle. This is something I've been doing for a long time. When I was in film school, I read the Robert Rodriguez book, Rebel Without a Crew. And in the book, he talked about how when he made El Mariachi, he limited himself to what he had easy access to. And that was a small town in Mexico and a bunch of other cool stuff. He also sold his body to medical science, which I highly recommend you don't do. So I followed that with a bunch of my shorts, but also with my most successful short film, and that is Her Name Was Samantha, which is on Amazon Prime, and you could watch it right now. When I set out to make that movie, I limited myself to what I had, and that was my apartment and the field outside my apartment. When I was casting the movie, I met my friend and entertainment lawyer and co-producer, Robert. He helped me so many ways. And the film, her name was Samantha, got into a bunch of film festivals. And like I said, I built a friendship. Later on in my life, I wrote my first feature movie, and Robert helped me get it made. And that's all because I limited myself. So when you're setting out to write your first script, always, always limit yourself. Do not dream, I mean, dream big, but don't dream too big to what you don't have. So let's talk about the next thing we can learn. Next thing I feel we can learn as filmmakers is looking back at the test screening for paranormal activity. Personally, I feel when you're writing a script, you should get as much advice about it as possible. See what works and what doesn't work. If enough people tell you something isn't good, you might want to cut it out. Now, don't be a pushover and just change things because a lot of people tell you you should. If you can defend it and convince them you're right, then go with it. But nine out of 10 times, those 15 people who are telling you something is wrong with your script, you might want to listen to them. Here's a bonus thing. Don't be that guy. And by that guy, I mean this. When I was in film school, in one of my screenwriting classes, this guy would get up and pitch his movie and everybody would offer what I thought was some really good, helpful advice because this guy clearly didn't know what he was doing. And he was really rude and confrontational when people were just 
offering him advice to make his script better. In fact, I think one time he said, I'm not going to change anything about this script. If you think like that, you're not going to make it very far in the film industry. The next thing I feel we should learn is be nice to everyone you meet. Imagine if Jason Blum would have been a total jerk to Noah Baumbach or been a total jerk to Ethan Hawke. His career would not have gone very far and your career is not going to go very far. For instance, if you're in film school and you only show up on days when your project is being talked about or you're pitching your script, other people are going to see that and they're going to resent you. The last thing we can learn from looking at the career of Jason Blum is sometimes you got to take an L. When you look at his career, a lot of bad stuff happened. The whole thing with Miramax being fired by Paramount. The failure of Jem and the holograms. Did he let any of that stuff get him down? No, he kept pressing on to try to do better next time. And that's something we all need to learn. Whether you want to be a filmmaker or anything else, when you take an L, get up, dust yourself off, and keep fighting. Here's a personal story I didn't know if I was going to share or not. So when I talk about film school again, I made a movie called The Percipient. Now, I was too young to do this because people put money into the movie. I was in over my head and it didn't go too well. In fact, it was so bad because of choices I made. I put all the blame on myself. I almost gave up making horror movies, but I later went on to make a movie called Invoking, which did not do well either. Um, I cast the movie with no money. I had no money for anything. I got to repeat that. And, you know, I thought the movie came out good, but I never was able to finish it. I was never able to put special effects in or any of the other stuff the movie needed to be as good as I thought it could be. In fact, some of the actors didn't even like it that much and said, the only reason we knew the story was because we were in it. That hurt me. But then I let that get me down. No, because I knew, hey, I learned from this and I am definitely going to do better next time. And like I said, I got to make a feature film two years ago, which hopefully will be getting distribution in 2024. So yeah, that's the last thing I want to leave you with is if you have a goal, no matter what it is, keep fighting keep shooting. So if you've been watching the video this long, I'm going to ask you to do me two big favors. Number one, hit that like button. And if you know somebody who wants to be a filmmaker, please tell them about my channel. And I have a question for you. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for, huh? Yeah.